Over the next few weeks, This Is America visits Japan, a country rich in tradition and undergoing a historic period of transition. We'll take a look at Japan's government, trade, economy, culture, and people, as well as seeing the sights and hearing the sounds of a country of great complexity and stunning beauty. We'll learn about what's on the horizon for Japan, the role of women in the workforce, continuous technological innovation, and the hosting of the 2020 Olympics. On this program, an exclusive interview recorded in Tokyo with Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe right before his summit meeting with President Obama. We'll talk about U.S.-Japan relations and Japan's importance in the region and in the world. Twenty twenty Olympics uh, coming up. Uh, you must be very excited. Come 2020, we would like to uh, showcase uh, the wonders of Japanese technology as well as the beauty of Japanese environment and the diligence and uh, serious and honest uh, aspect of Japanese people. Promoting a more active role for women in Japan's economy is a key element in Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's long-term growth strategy. Before heading off to Japan, we sat in on a U.S.-Japan Council Symposium which explored the changing reality and potential role of women in the workforce. Everybody has to see for themselves that gender equality is possible and it's not that difficult. Japan has a reputation as being an innovator and their craftsmanship is superb. Has the emphasis been placed too much in one area but left out the marketing area? Yes, uh, you made a very good point, you're right. Uh, some people say that uh, Japan won the competition in terms of technology but lost business. Therefore, going forward, we also have to focus on uh, both things, namely uh, technological development and marketing. We also continue to focus on technological advance and innovation, but at the same time, we have to make effort so that that would lead to successful and thriving business. If you look inside, the smartphone, the iPhone or a Samsung phone. So many of those parts are made in Japan and you can't make a smartphone without these tiny capacitors or transistors, that kind of thing. Japanese craftsmanship has pushed technology in new directions in trains, space exploration, and even aquariums. Hitachi is one of the largest business group uh, in Japan and probably in the world. We have uh, more than 900 uh, companies under the Hitachi Group. We have a total employment of uh, more than 300,000 all over the world. Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, is similar to NASA in the United States. We met with JAXA President Nioki Okamura. Dr. Okamura talked about the Hayabusa Project, one of Japan's recent contributions to space exploration. I'm wondering if you know Hayabusa, which is uh, something like you see mission, uh, which went to the uh, asteroid and then returned to uh, Earth having some samples. Another example of Japanese innovation can be found in its magnetic levitating trains, or maglev trains. Currently, we'll see the Tokaido Shinkansen. It will take about 90 minutes between Tokyo to Nagoya. But the, uh, we'll see the superconductive maglev. It will be shortened to 40 minutes between Tokyo to Nagoya. And the, between Tokyo to Osaka today on the, the Tokaido Shinkansen, it will take uh, two hours and 30 minutes. But it will be 67 minutes with mm. SC maglev. If someone's planning a vacation, why would they choose Japan? 
あの日本というのは私が考えるに。In my view, Japan offers five attractiveness as a tourism destination. First attractiveness is that Japan has a four seasons spring, summer, autumn, and winter. So、uh, Japan can offer very plentiful、uh, nature and also、uh, beautiful sceneries、uh, for those who are coming to Japan. And also, secondly, Japan is endowed with rich history and tradition. And thirdly, Japan offers a unique culture. Fourthly, Japan is safe, secure, and clean. And fifthly, this is most important. Japan Japan has a very delicious food to offer. We had a chance to meet with the famous calligrapher Shishu. Her work is seen in many different forms painting, film, television, three dimensional sculpture, and modern art installations. Her art reflects both tradition and innovation. Shishu was kind enough to show me around her studio and gallery. And explain the importance of calligraphy to Japanese culture. Well, I'd like to communicate with people around the world.、Uh, I'd like to、uh, let them know about Japanese culture and Japanese philosophy through art. So,、uh, when people look at my work,、uh, I hope they will be interested in Japan、uh, or in calligraphy or in Japanese culture. Tea is very important in Japanese culture. We quickly learned in the marketplace that tea was in focus everywhere. <laughs> to learn more about what tea means to the Japanese people, we had the unique opportunity to visit a famous tea house in Kyoto, which has been run continuously for 13 generations. There we observed a traditional tea ceremony. Participate in one ourselves and speak with the tea instructor. What is the lesson of the tea ceremony? Japan is home to thousands of Buddhist temples and Shinto shrines. Inari is the Shinto god of business, and people come here to pray for their own prosperity. This shrine in Kyoto is dedicated to his honor. Our guide, Chika Yoshida, explained further. As she showed me around. Three days of the New Year, the 2.5 million people are visiting this shrine. And why do they come to this shrine? For praying for the happiness in the New Year. Japan's trains run on time. If a train is supposed to leave at 2.11, it leaves at 2.11. And if it's supposed to arrive at 3, it does. It's all a testament to Japan's technology efficiency and teamwork. When a train arrives at the Tokyo station, a crew cleans the entire train in seven minutes flat. Sean McEnery is an American teaching English as part of the JET program. He explains the program and why he moved across the world to live in Japan. I studied Japanese in university and I've always been a fan of Japanese games. And I thought, oh, I'd love to move to Japan. And、uh, how can I do it? How can I do it? Oh, I can teach English. On March 11, 2011, Japan was hit by a massive earthquake and tsunami. So, this is where the tsunami comes. So, right at the end of this cut, the ocean bringing all of this wall of water here. Water, cars, boats, uh, debris, uh, uh, buildings, everything. Three years later, the cleanup continues and the rebuilding is underway. We met people there directly impacted by the event, including the then editor of the daily newspaper and now the director of a museum dedicated to March 11. Mr. Takeda invited a handful of students to tell us about their personal experiences at the time of the tsunami. The students, remember, were probably 12 or 13 at the time. They'd written short essays in English, and the details are heartbreaking. I went to my house. My house is broken in half.、Mm. Then my mother. Cried, and my brother so I I saw them I thought 
I wanted to stronger for my family. Well, sakura a cherry tree is so different from the other trees, you know. It blooms all of a sudden, you know, just before spring breaks and without green leaves, it pops up all the pink. You know, the one tree, if you see the huge tree uh, with the one or the cherry trees, pink petals comes out and all of a sudden and it comes down in a week all of a sudden when the strong wind comes it comes away like you know snowflakes and coming down and it's so beautiful it looks like a you know the beyond your imagination so uh, we do have a strong emphasis as a cultural asset in sakura <laughs>